we are arguing once again for the last two days about a resolution while a tangible bill got passed right under our noses what does this bill do well i want to show you all some of the things it does i can't i, I literally can't go into all of it let me zoom in a little bit here think if we can make sure y'all can see this stuff just some of the stuff that's being discussed in this particular resolution so just some of this stuff <clears throat> This, the title of it is uh, Enhanced Cooperation Between the United States and Israel. That's not good. Uh, this is a short table of contents. <laughs> Co Coordinator of the United States Israel Research and Development. Cooperation on directed energy capabilities. Cooperation on cybersecurity. Report on potential benefits and impact of, to the United States of establishing a joint U.S.-Israel Cyber Security Center of Excellence, Cyber Diplomacy Officer, United States Agency for International Development, and Memorandum of, uh, of uh, Israel Enhanced Cooperation, Cooperative Projects Amongst the United States and Israel and Developing Countries, Joint Cooperative Program Related to Innovative and High Tech uh, for the Middle East Region. Do you, so you want, want me to repeat that part? Joint cooperative program related to innovation and high tech for the Middle Eastern region. I don't know if you know what that means in political terms, but that means how do we create the most advanced weaponry possible to dominate the Middle Eastern region? That's what that actually means. I don't know if y'all know that. Uh, so the um. Oh, excuse me. It says since uh, I, was, I got lost on my page. I got it says since since of Congress on Eastern Mediterranean Energy Cooperation. I don't know what that means. But uh, then it says cooperation on other matters. Let's see what other matters includes. Let's see what that. Let's see what that includes. Let's find out. Section one ten cooperation on other matters. Where is that at? Oh. United States Israel cooperation on energy, water, homeland security, agriculture, and alternative fuel technologies. So they're going to they're re uh, um, they're reaffirming that they're going to push the 2014 act that was mentioned in the U.S. Uh, resolution. So once again, or excuse me, the uh, excuse me, the HR two four six resolution. So once again. That was all the, the resolution was all well and good. We can argue about that all day. But this is a bill. And we got played. I got played. I'm not even going front. I got played. And anybody who says they didn't get played while they were bickering and arguing about HR 246 and the merits of that are lying to you because we all got played. This bill is infinitely worse for Palestinians. Do you understand that? Let me explain something to you why this is infinitely worse for Palestinians before I go on to talk about other parts of that bill. So basically, you know how it's, it was, the whole thing was BDS, right? Whether or not it was silence and free speech, uh, what BDS is supposed to do as far as crippling the Israeli government and the idea of crippling the Israeli government economically disallows them from expanding further into the settlements as they run short on you know financial uh financial liquidities and 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 hopefully not getting any more weaponry and they, and then the private industry can't participate because you're p p boycotting them that's what the goal is right and i kept saying that not going to lie to you if the united states supported bds or I said this this morning, I should say, if the United States supported BDS substantively, you should be worried because it won't be it won't be effective because the United States never supports anything where the people are protesting something that is against the uh, against the powers that be right and what they want. They will never, ever support it if it is going to substantively change the system in any way, form or fashion. These are the facts. 
That's why I used to tell people about the Women's March. Like I said this morning on my video, I raised the eyebrow whenever I saw it being covered on CNN, MSNBC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I raised the eyebrow. I was like, mm, I don't know about this. That was why. Because we ultimately found out people like Debbie Washington Schultz were invited to speak at the Women's March. It became a fuck Trump love fest. It was not actually like the people who were sponsoring it were people that were against the the overall uh the overall movement of progressivism they like the people that were invited to speak so I, that's what I'll be, I'll be telling people the moment that the establishment is okay with what you're doing you're probably not working and that's just a, a fact though. that's a fact why do you think once again you don't ever see election integrity stuff debated and argued about. I did a video talking about how Tulsi's election integrity legislation was stolen and co-opted. And basically, the, the establishment used that bill, which I don't think will get passed in the Senate, thank God. But they were trying to use that bill to put control of the, uh, of the uh, uh, election and the power or in the hands of the people or the parties who are already in power in various states so that they would be able to have permanent control over how their elections turned out. Now, an election integrity bill should be one of the main topics of discussion today, but nobody discusses it, but maybe two or three of us. Because substantive discussion about election integrity one way or the other, if that bill was Tulsi's bill, it would have never gotten passed. It would have never gotten discussed. That's just, it's, it's, just, it's substantive, right? So that's how you can judge whether or not something is going to potentially work. Like the moment I was weirded out by the fact that the, the resolution asserted the First Amendment. Yeah, you can protest all you want to. You know why they were okay? I keep telling people there is a reason that they're saying this. There is a reason that they're okay with protesting. Don't get me wrong. That's a good thing. We don't want the government passing bills that would silence that. But you know what they were? They were like, go ahead, protest, BDS, do what the fuck you want to do. We don't care. Why? Because we about to give Israel all the money they want. So while we're once again having debates about the efficaciousness of BDS and X, Y, and Z, this bill just rendered HR 246 completely and utterly, like we don't, why are we debating it now? Because now BDS, as far as Americans participating in it, or and probably the rest of the world for that matter at this point. Now BDS, I'm not saying it's pointless. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but it kind of doesn't matter now because they just passed this legislation right under our noses while we were arguing about a damn resolution. A fucking resolution, people. Like, bruh. I don't understand. Like, I get it. We want to, everybody wants to, to, to get the moral high ground on the next person to prove that, that they're the person that we should be listening to, right? They want to de debate semantics. They want to do, all right, like, I'm, I'm trying to tell people, like, look, man, politics, there's real strategy to, be, to being in politics. There's real strategy to the reason that they introduced these resolutions. And there was real strategy behind what they did. Because they introduced these pieces of legislation on the same day. Guess what we were arguing and debating about? Yeah. Manny, this was a voice vote, no roll call. They pushed this under the guise of the Mueller reporting and Congress and House Resolution 246. I don't see Tulsi as a co-sponsor. You are absolutely right. I was just about to get to that. I was just about to get to that, Manny, and I appreciate the super chat. They, I was just about to say, uh, so Brian Crosby, who was in the chat, shout out to Brian, tagged me in this, and I was kind of confused, like, hold on, how did this pass without anybody know? CNN didn't cover this? None of, none of the famous progressive bitchers on YouTube? They, they call them bitchers because they bitch. Uh, none of the famous progressive bitchers who complain about everything that a progressive who isn't Bernie does is going to cover this? Well, why is that? Let me go look up, let me look this up. So I did. First thing you look up when you look for something like this, I would like to hear from Tulsi on these issues concerning Israel. Has she spoken on these issues yet? Uh, Maddie, if you want to, you can actually go look at some of the videos in my Tulsi 2020 playlist. And I have several videos outlining where she stands on the Israel-Palestine conflict. 
Um, so here's the problem with this particular bill. They took a bill where they're giving unlimited money to Israel to a voice vote. They had the nerve to do a roll call vote for a resolution so we can know where everybody stands. But a bill that is giving unlimited money to Israel is going to a voice vote. That makes no sense. That makes no rational sense. Like, think about it. If which one is a, is a law, which one is a declaration? The bill is a law, which is going to have to eventually go to the Senate. It is about to go to the Senate, actually. And which one's a declaration? The HR, the resolution, House resolution, was a declaration. So why do a roll call vote for a resolution so we can know where people stand? And then we do a, a full vote, or excuse me, a, a, a voice vote for the bill. Because we got played, because we got distracted, because we allowed the establishment to put us against each other based off of cult of personality, based off of people's petty squabbles, jealousy, whatever you want to call it, personal vendettas, personal agendas. And while we were bitching about a resolution, we just, you, you care about Palestine, but you don't, you're, we're not seeing an argument about this all over Twitter. Luckily, for those of you who are wondering, we can only see the co-sponsors because they didn't do a roll call vote. Thank God. Tulsi's name is not on this. AOC's name is not on this co-sponsored. Uh, Rashida Tlaib's name is not on this. Obviously, Ilan Omar's name is not on this. Uh, Presley's name is not on this either. Uh, Jaya Powell, her name is not on this either. So, whew. But also, this is what's kind of scary about this. There was like 200, I think it was 200 co-sponsors. I want to make 292, 292 co-sponsors. So if you know this is going to go to a roll call vote, why would you go out of your way to vote for to, to co-sponsor this? You could just say I and be done with it because the people taking money from APAC need to have their name on the dotted line so that APAC knows who to continue to give money to. Are these not facts? So we just spent two days debating over a resolution that has basically been rendered, like the, the debate over it has been rendered pointless because now BDS will be basically ineffective. People keep bringing up South Africa. Uh, and although I'm not completely and totally familiar with the boycotts of South Africa, I do know this though. South Africa was a unique situation because there was a lot of bloodshed involved. South Africa was a, was a, uh, a creation of Great Britain in their elites, not the United States in our elites. Great Britain, believe it or not, at first did not want uh, Israel to be a thing. Winston Churchill was actually vehemently against Israel being created. Uh, but eventually we were like, okay, cool, don't do it and we won't join the United Nations. And we were like, they were like, oh, oh, well, shit, we don't want another world war. So let's go ahead and just do it. So Israel is a thing now. Do you think that South Africa was reliant on our government's funding to maintain their apartheid? No, they were. Now they were, however, reliant on our corporations. So yeah, the boycotts worked there, but we weren't going to sanction South Africa, the government, because, well, to be honest with you, we were fighting against Nelson Mandela. We weren't fighting with him. Fidel Castro was interestingly enough fighting with, like on the side of Nelson Mandela against Western imperialism in the United States. Uh, and so bloodshed is what brought about the change in South Africa mostly. And even if you want to make the argument that boycotting and sanctioning worked in South Africa, that's cool, except for South Africa did not have an unlimited source of funding in the United States government. 
So now, once again, we're back to square one. What do we do about the tangibles? What do we do about this, this, this type of nonsense? Darren Levy, Nico, have George, have George Galloway on Israel was created before Winston Churchill. The Balfour Declaration uh, was created by the British Empire. So, yeah, but no, because Palestine was always, so Palestine owned Britain. And in order for Israel to be created, uh, Great Britain basically had to give up Palestine. So, but like Israel was created basically like in the, in the current form as the form we understand it is today after World War II was, was, was done, uh, when done, it was done and over with. Um, by Lord Rothschild, well, I mean, it was basically financed and perpetuated. The, the campaign was financed by Lord Rothschild, which is why in Tel Aviv, Lord Rothschild as like the name of the main street in Tel Aviv is actually Rothschild Ave or something like that. Um, but anyway, so that's just a, a few things, right? So we talked about the fact that there's no, there was no roll call vote. We talked about the fact that thankfully every progressive except for Ro Khanna did not co-sponsor this. Woo! Because I would have went on a damn tear. Oh my God. All this money we, we supposedly don't got for healthcare, but we are funding an entire joint effort to fund Israel's fuckery? Oh no, 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 no. That's not cool. I'm not down with that at all. Um, so this is section two. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all like, the details of the details. Y'all already know what they're going to say. A bunch of Israel fuckery. But this is the stuff I want to talk about. Just so you can see the type of things that we're funding. <laughs> While, so basically, we're funding Israel. We can't afford to fund healthcare for our own people. Why, like, but we keep providing them with all types of jobs and opportunities to screw over Palestine and the rest of the Middle East. Section 201. Security is, or so first of all, it's Title II or Section 2, Security and Assistance for Israel. Damn, I thought all the stuff about cyber security and stuff like that was already up there for Israel. But hey, we got to have a whole section dedicated to the security for Israel because it is definitely not Israel who has been shooting Iranians and Syrians and trying to take over Golan Heights and constantly threatening Iran. Definitely not the, the Israelis that have been doing it. It's not the Israelis that are literally, you know, creating settlements where they make Palestinians a second class citizen. Oh, Jesus. It is. It's like the United States. You know, why we build so many weapons other than the weapons contractors. Why? You know why we have to why people have been conditioned to feel that we have to wage war? Because when you're in the wrong as much as the United States is when it comes to waging warfare, you feel like you always have to be on the defensive. So that's why. But uh, anyway. Section 201, findings, statement of policy. Oh God, I'm scared. Let me see what the statement of policy says. Uh, statement of policy. It is the policy of the United States to provide assistance to the government of Israel in order to help enable Israel to defend itself uh, by, or excuse me, to defend itself by itself and develop long-term capacity primarily through acquisition of advanced capabilities that are available from the United States. That makes no sense. It is our policy to provide assistance to the government of Israel in order to help it, to help enable Israel to defend itself by itself. With our money, with our weapons, with our allyship, with our soldiers. Come on, bro. This, this resolution is full of shit. Or this, this bill, I should say. Oh, excuse me. Oh, there's a contingency plan. Contingency plans to provide Israel with necessity or with necessary defense articles and services. In general, the president acting through the secretary of defense and in uh, consultation with the secretary of state shall establish an update as appropriate, uh, as appropriate contingency plans to provide Israel with defense articles and services that are determined to be necessary by the Secretary of Defense. 
So I don't know if you uh I don't know if you know this, but that's a blank check. That is a blank check to Israel that we just gave. This is this is ridiculous. I I can't believe Rokana co-sponsored this. Because and here's the crazy thing though. For those of you who don't know, Ro has actually been decently good on Palestine and Israel. That's what's crazy to me. He's good on Yemen, or he's bad on Syria. He's bad on Venezuela too. But he, he he's been generally good on things involving Israel. And that's why this is wild to me. But it also is not that wild to me because he does take APAC money. Durant, 11, thanks for the super chat. Nico, please watch the lobby, a documentary by Al Jazeera about paying spot. Oh, I did a, a short video on that at the beginning of this election, actually. Um, but we just gave a blank check for those of you. So I'm gonna read that part again. This is the part I'm, I'm talking about. And by the way, I see, I just saw that there's a lot of streaming interruptions. I want to be clear about something. I'm looking at my encoder right now. And my encoder says that we are green. We are live streaming perfectly fine. And so if you're seeing a low output and a bunch of cutting in and out, that's YouTube doing that. So I just want to be very clear about that, uh, which is generally the case when we're talking about Israel stuff. Cause my video this morning, it was like, you know, a little bad um, because there's a lot of high traffic in the morning for YouTube at like around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So that is what it is. But now that we're talking about Israel, we're getting thought of by YouTube, but my encoder says that we're green and good to go. So, uh, Maddie, you said I missed your super chat. Let me check it out. Big Irv. Tulsi did not sign it. Maddie Z uh, Zubik, thanks for the super chat. Sorry, I missed it. I would like to hear from Tulsi on these issues concerning Israel. Has she spoken on these issues yet? Um, she, she has not spoken on the recent issues. However, I mean, actually, I probably expect her to, do, to say something. But I've covered pretty thoroughly her past statements on uh, giving Israel unnecessary funding on BB Netanyahu on our government constantly capitulating to BB Netanyahu and the Israeli government. Uh, MA thanks for the super chat. Israelis use the billions we give them in aid not just for free healthcare and college they use USA to fund their lobbies. So we are getting effed by Israel with our own money. That is brilliantly put. You're right. And they use that money to, if we are paying for their weaponry, who do we know for a fact these people turn their weapons on? They turn their weapons on Palestinian people. Listen, remember how we just said that the, the, the section 202 said it's supposed to help Israel <laughs> defend itself by itself. Oh, but there's actually a waiver for existing or imminent military threats to Israel too. Waiver for existing imminent military threat to Israel. In general, upon receiving information that Israel is under an existing or imminent, uh, or imminent threat of military attack, the president may waive the requirements of this act and direct immediate transfer to Israel. <laughs> we just gave Israel the ultimate blank check. We just gave them everything. Oh, God, we can't even pay for health care in this country. Can you believe that Trump tried to have the audacity to block aid to, Gaza, to, to the Gaza Strip, but just gave Bibi Netanyahu? For those of you who are wondering <laughs> why Bibi was chuckling on Twitter about the resolution because he wasn't chuckling on Twitter about the resolution in case people were, were unclear about this now. He wasn't chuckling on Twitter about the resolution. He was chuckling on Twitter about this. Because he's like, watch all y'all debate this nonsense while we get this money. 
Because that's what just happened. Um, so once again. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just tripping about this. This is wild to me. I'm, I'm upset, y'all, because I don't usually get played play with the distractions. Usually I catch the dis distractions pretty quick, and I guess a day later isn't that bad. But I usually don't like entertaining the nonsense before, you know, or I don't like entertaining nice nonsense when it's more important things to cover. And this is under that category more important. Manny, thanks for the super chat. Will Roe be removed from Bernie's campaign? That I cannot say for sure, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, I'll put it like this, man. And I hate to, I hate to keep it all the way real. Um, but, uh, not saying that everybody has to agree on everything because that's not how politics works, not how real life works. But Roe is doing this so openly and aggressively that clearly it has been made, it's been considered to be okay by Bernie or else he wouldn't be uh, the chair of his campaign or co-chair of his campaign. I do know for a fact that Nina is not okay with some of the things that Roe has been involved in. Not that she has a personal problem with Roe, but um, so on one side of the campaign, you have Nina, who is super progressive, usually gets it right 90% of the time she gets it right. Uh, especially since becoming a surrogate for Bernie. Uh, understanding what it means to be a surrogate. Like you have to be ahead of the curve on these issues. Uh, and then on the other side, you have Roe defending Rachel Maddow. Uh, you have Roe co-sponsoring this nonsense. When are we going to see these people introduce a bill to provide aid to Palestine? That would be my goal. If you want to give aid to Israel because you feel like, you know, the whole Holocaust arguments being made to you, that's, you know what, that's even okay for me if you want to do a bill simultaneously to provide legitimate aid to Palestine and see it through. So, um, it's disappointing. I honestly can't believe it. Because it's my, y'all know I got my issues with Roe. I've always had my issues with Roe, really since he announced uh that you know that he won and he's a justice democrat and we were looking through his financial records and it didn't look good um and then he started doing some shady stuff so i've had my issues with roe but i've always said the one thing that we can at least count on roe to do is vote the way bernie would vote in in very key situations and that simply has not been the case lately um philly yardy vibes thanks for the super chat appreciate it didn't roe retweet a warren bernie tweet from 20, for a 2020 ticket. Yeah, he retweeted Dave, David Sirota's tweet about the Warren, the Warren Bernie 2020 ticket being the dream ticket, which is, that's a whole different thing. David Sirota has been kind of disappointing to me as well lately. Um, you know, I still consider him a great progressive voice. I think once he get, gets back into objective journalism, he'll be, um, he'll be better. But, uh, it's just sad to me. It's, just, it's, it's sad to me how you're promoting the very woman that we know is being propped up to hurt Bernie. Uh, Philly Yardy Vibe, thanks for that super chat. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so, this is the part, Thriller in 876. How about legit America first, Medicare for all? We're waiting, man. We're waiting. <laughs> We're waiting. I don't know. Like, we are waiting. I don't know when it's going to happen. We can't pass Medicare for all, but we are giving unlimited money. What happened to all these fiscal conservatives out here, bro? Did, did the fiscal conservatives just, like, they, they disappear whenever Israel's money is time to get? Come on, bro. I will say this, as much problems as I had with Obama and how he was kind of, he always somewhat capitulated to BB. I will say this, there was plenty of times where BB tried to get unlimited amounts of money uh, to, to fund Israel and Obama won't have in it. 
He's like, he knew the power of APAC. So he's still playing ball for the most part. But he tried to stand up to, to BB. Because you know him and BB didn't like each other. I don't know if y'all knew that. But he and BB didn't like each other. That's probably the only good thing about Obama. <laughs> but uh, he never gave them unlimited money. Manny, what's Kyle's position? Is his Twitter blowing up? I'm just saying all this fake outrage in his homeboy row. I will say, uh, in Kyle's defense, Kyle has done a very good job of holding Roe accountable. I will give him credit for that. Um, it, it sucks when you got to, you know, but I don't look for people to attack the people you like. I just look for people to hold other people accountable. I, I look for people to be held to the same standard. And I do firmly believe, once again, that... Um, that the truth of the matter is we got played and I think that they used Tulsi's name uh, to distract us because think about it it wasn't just like the independent journalism world covering this stuff we had to get our information from somewhere and it was a bunch of articles that were out that were using Roe, Tulsi, I, and Ayana's name in their headlines in their art excuse me in their article and so that's what we paid attention to, but we didn't even realize that the article didn't mention the fact that this got passed right along beside it. So when we're talking about whether or not something is being used to quote unquote split up the progressive movement or use as a distraction, this is what we're talking about. We just got played, we did. It sucks to admit, but we did. It's, it, it really does, man. Because I honestly, as far as BDS is concerned, I don't know what, what we're going to do. 